We're doing a frost check in the food forest this morning. You can see um, food forest right here. No frost on the inside rows. Looks pretty good out here. Um, quite a bit of frost. So we'll take a look at some details and see what's going on. It's, it's, a, it's a live being. This earth is a live being. It's a cold morning in the food forest, you guys. Um, you can see we're doing a frost check. Inside here, no frost. It's actually pretty sweet. Um, most of the plants, especially in the inside, the inner, on the outside edges, it's a little bit more frosty, but um, you can see out there, the grass out here is... pretty covered in frost. Um, and as soon as you kind of get into by the second row of the food forest, there's no frost on the ground, maybe some on top of some of the Mexican sunflower. So if you compare it to out there on the outside edges of the food forest, um, you kind of pan inwards and you can see there's very little and then there's no frost once you get back here, um, even on top of the Mexican sunflower, whereas on the outside edges, even on this second row right here, there's still some just dusting on the top but the tree line in the middle and underneath, um, even the papayas right here, um, there's another one right here, totally fine, no frost at all. Um, especially when you, again, compare it to what's going on out there. There's definitely frost. So today is the winter solstice, shortest day of the year. It's also the coldest day so far. We have ended up with a little bit of frost out there in the open. Um, so we're just out here at the agroforestry and the food forest area doing some observations and we're noticing there's some frost on top of the Mexican sunflower on the edges, um, especially out there. But once you kind of start getting into the depths of the food forest, you really start to see the effects of the microclimate. And we sent the drone up early and you can actually really see how there's very little frost in this area um, just because of the tree cover and the density and how much it, it retains um, heat more and it prevents the frost from settling as quickly. I, I can go into more details, but basically you can just see the actual effects of it. There's a lot of frost on the grass out here. It's a lot colder, um, whereas in here, things are more protected. And we're not talking about the big trees. Those are doing the protecting, but it's these really little guys here down and low on the ground, these seedlings that we're trying to protect. And they're being, they're, they're getting everything they need, right? They might be a bit cold. They're not growing at all really, but at the moment, all these other layers of the canopy are preventing that frost from settling on our tiny little sensitive tree seedlings and allowing them to stay alive, grow. Um, and they're just making it more tolerable um, they're moderating the temperature in the microclimate by actually just being here and growing, creating that um, creating that microclimate compared to out here where there's nothing. So grow a food forest, um, build your frost protection into it, and go make some more observations. So you can see here the frosty ground cover, um, and then we now we're seeing the frosty Tithonia diversifolia, which is not actually a frost hardy species. Um, it might manage this, it might not, who knows. But what it's doing here is it's acting as a service plant so that the young and more tender and high value seedlings under here, the ice cream bean, which we're looking at now, um, the cherimoya, the adamoya, the casimiroa, the white sapote, all these trees, we don't want the frost to touch them. And so the idea is using, and there's the white sapote, um, using the Mexican sunflower, the bananas, the tree lucerne, the eucalypts, all of these plants, the acacias as well, are meant to provide that frost protection while these more sensitive trees are young. And you can see just comparing the two areas, there definitely is a benefit to them. So, I wanna share a tip with you guys because it's the shortest day of the year, it's the winter solstice today. Use this opportunity in today or the next coming days to really look at the sunlight, right? Any angle of the sunlight throughout the day 
because it's the lowest it's gonna be all year, right? So it's lowest in the sky and use that opportunity throughout the day, especially around noon when the sun is in the, as high as it's gonna go in the sky. Look how long the shadows are, right? Of a building, of a house, um, of, of whatever you have around that's gonna maybe impact what design considerations you need to be looking at. But look how far back the sun stays, right? If you're looking at a building, how far back are you still getting sunlight in the middle of winter when the sun is at its highest, right? Because that can tell you a lot about where you can plant certain things that are gonna need to have that sunlight all year long, or where you might wanna locate um, a sitting bench or a seat so you can make sure that it's always sunny. Depends on what you're looking at, but pay attention today to the sun throughout the day, in the morning, in the evening, in the next week or so. Look at what's happening because um, the sun is at that lowest point. So um, use this week and make those observations that you can't make at any other time of the year. Um, we're out here making some observations with the food forest this morning, um, sunlight levels, but also the frost and how well the microclimate has developed since last year. Um, it's keeping quite a lot more of that early frost away. Can't say anything yet about the later frosts that will come, um, but these early frosts have been, um, the seedlings and all the young fruit trees, the high value things have been really well protected so far by all these support plants. So, doing a good job. Um, go make some observations today. It's a great day for it. The sun is out, feels good and warm. So, well, it feels a little bit cold, but get out there. the ice cream bean or an inga bean, inga edulis. Um, it's about a year old and it is not frost tolerant. Now, this is not in the food forest. It doesn't have a microclimate over it or a canopy much of anything over it actually, um, which is why the frost is settled on it and it's looking really sad. I'm not sure it's gonna survive. Um, and just compare it to the papayas that are in the food forest, just about 20 meters away, but under the protection, they're even more sensitive to melting from frost. And you can see here, it just looks absolutely beautiful. It's not got any signs of frost damage at all. Same with this one here under the protection of the eucalypts and the acacias um, being buffered by those extreme temperatures. 